Welcome to the channel. This video has been a long time coming. This project has not been the most straightforward one I've ever done, but here we have a selection of bits and pieces, and today we're going to build a 286. So let's get going. Arrayed before you for your delectation and deliberation are the bits we're going to use. So we've got our motherboard, which has a, I think it's a 12 megahertz 286 already on it. And we've got a, a nice IO card, usual stuff. We've got a Tseng Labs ET3000 for the graphics. There's a power supply there just for testing. There is actually one in the case, but just going to test everything before I put them away. And then there's a couple of drives there. I've got a floppy drive and there's also an internal Zip 100 that I'm toying with the idea of putting in there just to make things easy to transfer around because I'm not sure whether or not I should put an optical drive in this or not. Okay, first up is the motherboard. So this is labeled a Morta TK82230. So I couldn't find any info on this board whatsoever. No diagrams, no nothing. Luckily, there's not much to do here. There's no jumper configuration or anything going on. The chip's already in there, the 12 megahertz Intel 286. So I'm going to leave that there and go with things as they're set up already. For expansions, two 8-bit and six 16-bit ISA slots. So plenty of expansion slots. AT keyboard connector and AT power supply connector. For memory, interesting, we've got a choice of two types of package here. We've got dips and sips, so I presume you can't use them both at the same time. We'll have to decide which one of those to use. And then we've got space for a 287 maths coprocessor, so probably be putting one of those in at some point in the future. And generally, it's a dirty but clean board. All the traces look good. There's a little bit of green gunk still around the battery connector that needs cleaning up. But apart from that, it looks pretty much good to go. So we've got one of those two-chip BIOSes, odd and even. And this one's by American Megatrends, and it's dated 1986. It's a matching set on this board. So we've got our keyboard controller, also from American Megatrends, and also dated 1986. Where was I in 1986? I was at art college, getting drunk, not doing any work. You can clearly see the level of crap on this board. It's just a bit of surface dust, nothing to worry about. So a bit of a, a wipe and all of that should go away. So then we've got this UMC chip. I'm not quite sure what this does. I've seen these kind of things on other boards would be in control of the IO. It's kind of chipset type thing, I think. Let me know if you know better. And then we've got our clock crystal and another chip that I'm not too sure, but I guess this is kind of a chipset-y type thing as well. And we have our processor. So this is an Intel N80286-12, and this was a processor that came out in 1982. So pretty cool plastic package. Still nice. So... As if by magic, a few minutes later, a wipe of IPA, and it's looking pretty shiny and pretty cool. What kind of memory to use? Dips are interesting and indeed fairly rare these days. Sips are super interesting because they were very short lived and not a great number of motherboards supported them. I feel like I ought to have some of my collection. So I got some. I got two 512k sticks. I've got a megabyte of the stuff. I won't lie, this was not a bargain. This was expensive. It's getting quite rare now. But I'm glad to have these in my collection and they should go very well with this build. Going to pop these in the board before I do anything else because it's fiddly enough dealing with sims inside a case. But these things with their exposed pins are probably going to be a lot more tricky. They do take quite a lot of force to push them in fully. Initially, I pushed them in being a bit careful and they weren't in far enough. But yeah, you have to push them in, but they seem sort of stable enough once they're in place. The memory's in place and I've got all this stuff out on the bench. So I've decided I'm going to put everything together and make sure it works before I put it in the case because I've done that so many times before where I build a machine and I have blind confidence that it's going to work and it never does. And this stuff is a bit older than things that I've previously built with. So I think it's probably a wise move to make sure that it all hangs together first. So first up, we've hooked up the power supply and I'm going to stick this 
Sanglab's ET3000 into the machine. Uh, the ET3000 is not to be confused with the ET4000. The ET4000 was widely regarded as being a bit of a super speedy card in the 2D world, but the 3000 is widely regarded as being a dog and runs pretty poorly, but it should be fine for a 286 of this age and speed. So first thing that happened was nothing. There was no image out of this thing whatsoever. It does support a large array of graphics formats. So it supports like Hercules, IBM Monochrome. It is supposed to support VGA, which is what I'm using. And I believe from what I've read it online that when you plug the VGA cable in, it should kind of override anything else that's going on. It has a set of dip switches and since it wasn't overriding from the VGA cable, I went through all of the permutations of that using the manuals that I found online and it still didn't put out anything. It was like it's trying, it's putting out something. The, the monitor light goes green like it's receiving a signal, but doesn't display an image. Could be the monitor. Either way, for now, I'm just going to put this to one side and get something that I know works. I opened up my 386 and dug out the trusty Trident card that was in there. It's well proven to work. I've used it in a bunch of other stuff, so shame about the ET3000. I'll have to look into that a bit more later, but for now we'll just stick the Trident card in and you can see that that's getting us an image on the screen so we can proceed with the build. Everything is really basic in the BIOS. It's a single page. You set up your dates, you set up your drives, and there ain't much else you can do. So I tried to set up the hard drive that I selected for this build, which was a one gigabyte Kona drive, and it wouldn't detect. So I switched it out for a smaller capacity one. I think it was a 500 meg, and that one did detect, so all cool. I was kind of torn about what operating system to put on this. When I got my first 286, which was the first PC I ever used, which was in 1989, that was uh, a 16 megahertz 286 and it came with DOS 4. The closest to that I've got is, well, on one side I've got DOS 3, on one side I've got PC DOS 5, but I don't have anything DOS 4. I could have downloaded it, but I decided to go with DOS 3 for now and see how far that gets me. And yes, it hasn't escaped my notice. I can see there's some pretty crazy screen corruption going on here. Crazy colours. Don't really know what that's about, but we'll have a look at that in a moment. So despite the crazy corruption, DOS 3 seems to have installed pretty easily. So cool. Got a working operating system. So it all seems to be working internally. Let's get the case up here and have a quick look at that. There's a lot of baggy of posts in here, which is cool. Nylon posts for the motherboard to go on the tray. And it looks like it's got a 200 watt power supply already in there. It's very dusty, so I'm going to give it a bit of a wipe and then we can put it back together again and start the build. Once I had stripped down, there was a little bit of rust in there around where the feet are. The feet are all missing, so I need to do something about that. Um, I wasn't going to do any kind of major sort of repairs or anything on this thing so i just got some rust killer gave it a bit of a rub and put some rust killer on it just to you know the kind of rust converter stuff that kills the rust and gives it a sort of hard crust so it shouldn't spread anymore and that will do for now and then once everything was out i just gave it a damn good wipe down with uh, a lemon smelling antibacterial wipe for kitchens very nice smelled lovely we need to deal with what's left of the barrel battery. The stalks of the old battery were still soldered in place. So got out the old solder sucker, sucked those out and cleared the holes. Now controversially, I'm going to put a barrel battery on this. I tend to do that on most of the builds I've sort of ended up that way. I use the nickel metal hydride versions of these barrel batteries, which to the best of my knowledge are relatively safe from exploding and leaking goo the way that the nickel cadmium batteries did back in the day and it keeps the look of the board so maybe contentious but that's what i'm going to do this one's come with three legs so i'm gonna have to do a bit of folding to fold one of those away so i've only got two which means the battery's going to go on at a slight angle but shouldn't cause any problems i don't think so the board only had four posts that came with it and some of those were missing bits that slide into the motherboard tray and I'm going to try and make up with that with some of these hexagonal posts, nylon hexagonal posts and see how far we get with that. So they were a relative success I think and 
the motherboard is now mounted to the tray and while I'm at it I got some of these kind of slidey furniture things I think you put them on the bottom of your chair feet when you've got wooden floors and things to stop them scratching and they make perfect computer feet so I'm going to pop four of those on this. Now the big dilemma now so let's get some of these um, front panel connectors connected to the motherboard it all seems to be fairly well marked there's no speaker on this one uh, I might put a speaker on at some point later but I can't find one I know I've got one somewhere but let's get them plugged in and hope that they're correct because I don't know if I could be bothered to undo this tray once it's in and I'll just have to get my hands in and do a bit of trial and error but let's see I think everything's in that needs to be in to get the thing into the case so the case is clean the motherboard's clean it's on its tray Let's just pop it in, screw it on, and yep, looking pretty nice. Motherboard's in. All that remains is to put the bits and pieces in, so going to get the cards in, going to get the drive caddy in, and plug it all into the power supply, plug in the IDE cable, the floppy cable, and see what happens. I really wanted to get the... LEDs go in for the turbo button on this thing. It's 12 megahertz to 6 megahertz. I can't see myself ever having to turbo down to 6 megahertz, but it's nice to have. There's a turbo header on the board, so well, you've got to use it. This particular machine came with no jumpers on the back of that turbo light at all so it took a bit of figuring out and a bit of googling to find something that looked vaguely similar to figure out where to connect the the 5 volt power connector from the power supply and how to configure the jumpers for the on and off positions but got there in the end and it's looking pretty cool and don't think I've got the hard drive hooked up to the controller yet but that should be simple. I decided to load an optical drive in the end and drop the zip drive just for ease of use because on my 8086 it's just a friggin nightmare getting software onto it and I tend to buy stuff on CD and I do have a few floppies but I tend to buy stuff on CD so that's the way we're going to go. I tried to load the CD drive on DOS 3 which was a bit of a no-go I guess it was some disk size limitation or something like that it didn't want to know. Uh, I also found when editing the config sys and the auto exec dot bat I forgot all about this. DOS 3 doesn't have edit neither does DOS 4 which is how I know about it, but Edlin is the program that you use to edit the files. And it's not a pain in the arse, and you can see it here. Unfortunately, my camera had a bit of a malfunction. I think I hit something that changed the resolution, so sorry about the fuzziness, but there you go. So decided to load the optical drive, and it didn't work with DOS 3. Well, at this point, I suddenly remembered that I had a five and a quarter inch drive that I recently purchased and done nothing with so I thought that would go really nice with this machine so that I think this is from an 8086 it's an Amstrad drive it's got some Sony chips but I think it's a, a 360 kilobyte drive but yeah I thought it would be a nice thing to stick in this machine before I installed DOS 6 so let's pop that in and then we'll get DOS 6 on and see if we can get the CD drive sorted out as well So DOS 6 installed without any issues and I managed to use edit which is good but DOS 6 isn't all it seems on a 286 and in some ways it feels kind of sacrilegious because it's limited. So if you try and do something like MemMaker and DOS 6.22 on a 286 I'll just tell you go and get stuffed because it needs a 386 or more to do that kind of thing. So a lot of the bells and whistles on DOS 6.22 will not work on a 286, which is a bit of a shame. So it means you've got to do things like memory management for your games and stuff the old way, but yeah, well, I don't know if that's a bad thing or not. The DOS 6.22 solves some of the problems, but not all of them. So it let me put the stuff into config sys and auto exec bat which didn't throw any errors when you booted, but it did hang when it tried to load the oak cd -rom .sys driver, which was a bit of an arse. So I tried a few different versions of that, but made no difference. Eventually, I tried Vide CDD, which I think is Asus's universal CD driver, 
and that did the trick. So suddenly I had a working CD-ROM. So for sound, uh, I've got an 8-bit card. I had an 8-bit card back in the day on my 286 that I had in the late 80s, early 90s. It was a, I think it was a Media Vision uh, Thunderboard, which was, I hated it. I hated it. It was in the bargain bucket of the local computer sh game shop and it didn't work the way that I wanted it to. It didn't play the voices on Falcon 3.0 and stuff like that. Uh, but that card is rare and valuable now and this is, as far as I can tell, it's a Chinese clone of uh, Sound Blast 2 and doesn't have any real OPL or anything on it. Everything's clone, I guess. But it sounds okay and in the spirit of that Media Vision Thunderboard, we're going to stick the 8-bit card into this machine as well. So I guess that's the build kind of pretty much done now. We'll get the case lid back on and get some software installed and see if it all still works. The case is pretty nice. It's got a little crack and a few little dinks on it, as you'd expect for something of this age. It also had a lot of glue residue on it and some dirt, so I gave it a good rub down all over with some gunk remover and some IPA and it came up looking pretty nice. So then the only thing remaining to do in time on a tradition is to launch the ship by placing a funky case badge on it. So I've got a couple of funky 286 badges and I'm going to go with a colourful one and that is the cherry on the cake. It looks pretty damn cool. I just realised I haven't tested the sound card yet so we'll get some games on there so I'm going to put this Space Legends compilation on there which has three games that should run pretty well on this machine and we'll see if we can get any sound from it. I have a copy of M1 Tank Platoon on five and a quarter discs, which I've never installed a game from before, so I gave that a go, but unfortunately the discs seem to be damaged, so I think we're just going to have to stick with Elite to test this machine out with for now. I guess that pretty much wraps it up for this build video. It's turned out to be a pretty sweet machine. It was an absolute pain in the ass building it. it. Nothing seemed to quite work correctly, but got there in the end and it looks pretty damn cool. So it's going to sit alongside the other members of its family. So it's the junior member of my home build family. So we've got the this 286 12 megahertz and next to that we've got the 386 40 megahertz and to the right of it. It's one bad thing about these high-low turbo displays you can't remember necessarily what speed processor you've got in there i think i put a an sx25 in the 486 but i've got an upgrade plan for that so i'll probably be revisiting this machine in the near future the 486 but in the meantime they look pretty damn cool sitting side by side so i think i'm gonna have to find a place to permanently keep them like that and then they'll probably become my core sort of retro gaming machines i think so one from each generation It'd be quite cool to try and get a 8086 board and maybe do a home build of an 8086 and then basically you've got all of the generations from that sort of classic dos gaming era but yeah they look pretty sweet and i'm really pleased with the way they've turned out i think i'm gonna have to change the badge on the 486 to match the other two i think but yeah that's pretty much it i hope you enjoyed the journey of making this machine as much as i did and if you did, it'd be great if you consider giving me a thumbs up, subscribing or leaving a comment. And I hope to see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.